Superbook 24, I'm here on the booth of Bitwig and they have a big celebration, they have a new update, they, ce uh, they celebrate 10 years of Bitwig. Yes, it's already 10 years of Bitwig and I'm here with Dave. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm fine. Good. Um, I think the first thing first, you have a new update. You are still continuing updating Bitwig with new features, new, devi uh, with, uh, new devices and so on. Exactly, yeah. I, we'd, it was just our 10th anniversary, so version 1 came out 10 years ago, our, now our 22nd major update, Bitwig 5.2, has just come out with a lot of uh, studio-focused kind of tools. Uh, a high-level compressor, some modeled but unique uh, modern EQs, and some editing workflows and all sorts of other things. And we but I, I uh, remember uh, Bitwig already had compressors, EQs, and so on. Oh, sure. What makes this new update, uh, what do you see the need of these to adding? So adding more well, co color? Or? Oh, definitely. There's a lot about color, character, and there's so many reasons people want to use a compressor. Sometimes it's about levels, sometimes it's about coloring or tone, sometimes it's even about distortion or other things, So, or mastering. We set a crazy goal to try to make a compressor that works for all of those uses, and that's what we tried to do. So now that you mention it, um, we could even start with the old compressor and then look at the new one real quick. That's not a problem. So I've got a track here. I'll hit play for a minute, and then we'll focus on the bass for now. A lot of different things going on. If I focus on the bass for a moment. So I have this bass track, which is in from the grid, our uh, modular sound design environment. Which if we're keeping track, that was in version three about five years ago. Now, if I were to add a compressor after this, our original compressor is very functional. I can open it in the help view, where it's interactive and show it a little bit bigger where it has a lot of the standard things you would expect. I can set a threshold, either here. I can set a ratio for how much it should be doing reduction, output, attack, release. These are the things you need, and it's a basic uh, feedback-based compressor that does what you'd expect. But for all the coloring options and the other ideas, I'm gonna go ahead and right-click on this compressor and say I wanna upgrade to Compressor Plus, which is our new one. And you can already see that things are a little bit different. It's still pretty familiar the way it's laid out. I still have threshold, ratio, attack, release. I still have interactive things. But I'm getting a bunch of rainbows here already. <clears throat> because it's doing analysis in a multi-band fashion. Because we found to get to characters and other things, this was a very direct way of doing it. <clears throat> now, when I say characters, yeah, I have things like a knee setting. Um, I even have other crazy options. I can switch from a standard compressor to a dual compressor. So now I can kind of lift the low level signal. And you'll even occasionally see some gain being added. If maybe you want to accentuate the breaths or the air of a room on something. Those sorts of things. We'll start with standard. Now, we've got a lot of options here. Vanilla, in our character chooser, lets us basically say, Whatever you're setting, we will literally apply it. You want it to be super, super fast, zero milliseconds? That's possible here. We'll do what you're saying. But then after that are five options on a spectrum from smooth, no harmonic distortion, just the nicest, gentlest one you could ask for, uh, to glue in the middle for like a mix bus kind of thing to connect your sounds, to smash. So a range from smooth to smash, which will definitely add harmonics and change the tone as it goes. So, based on modeling, you modeled some uh, uh, compressors from the past or some modern ones? Oh, or sure. Uh, your... Well, I mean, we... All the compressors that exist in the world, we know them and we're trying them, and each one filters in in a different way. So if glue feels like an SSL bus compressor sort of thing, well, of course. Um, there's a touch of everything here. So smooth, now I see only a few frequencies are really pushing it, and it's not looking at the high parts as much. Or over, which tends to over-compress, but in a non-distorted way. It's trying to stay in compression longer. So for all of these characters, there's also this auto-timing knob that lets us say, adapt this character to match the incoming signal, which will change over time. So just those two controls can give me a whole lot of mileage. Once I go to glue, 
It's pushing things a lot, and I hear a different sound. And then resist, which does become a little bit more harmonic and interesting. All the way to smash, which is really going to cut through the mix and chew up the scenery, as we would say. Now, if you want detailed controls, you can see the multiband analysis that's happening for the lows, low mids, highs, and highs. And then instead of giving you four compressors to reprogram, well, we took a different approach. We said, okay, we have these central functions. You've, you've set that already. If you want less compression in the bass, maybe you just lower the intensity and it bends that curve up a bit. I can even see it down here. And I can see that the red is triggering a little bit less than it was a minute ago because I'm asking for less. Or just to even quicken the timing. You know, maybe this low mid is really where the power comes from. So let's force it to trigger more and now you see it's getting engaged. So there's a lot going on here while trying to keep a familiar small footprint and even then give you some VCA modes for modeling hardware afterwards. I could have a truly multi-band kind of digital stand-in for the prism mode, where you hear each band accentuated a little bit more, or something that's modeling transistors or tape saturation. You could even push into that and get some so, tone. Yeah. So the new compressor can be described as if you, uh, for the people who want to really the plus in the, in the compressor. Exactly. So if the, if the standard is not enough, you want this, this and this color and you want more flexibility. Oh, exactly. And even if you were using the old one, you start with the same knobs. And if you want to, you say, yeah, upgrade to that and let me see if it goes into a different interesting place. So that's the short overview of the compressor in particular. Now, if I was to pick a different sound here, like the synth that's kind of dancing around a little bit. This little wavetable getting pushed. Now, what might be interesting here is one of our new EQs, which, again, they start um, by focusing on what has happened in the past. So our EQ category, yes, we have the big standard ones for defining every spectrum and drawing and having five different controls. We have those where you can set everything. Um, but there's a good name in EQ with Poltec. So with the Sculpt EQ, everybody knows what's in the box. We did a component model of the EQP1 from Poltec to get the low-level sound of what's happening in there, along with some uh, modern niceties. For example, being able to see a little readout of, oh, there's attenuation happening here. The second I turn the knob, I have a sense of what's happening instead of having to know it to begin with. So that can be a little bit nice. We can go ahead and see what's happening. So the fun thing with the Pultec is that when you add the attenuation in the lows, it definitely cuts the lows, but then the boost quickly eats all the attenuation and turns it into more of a, a tone color, so I can kind of edge this in a way. There are different color, uh, say, modeled uh, EQs inside. Yeah, different. well this one is modeling that one in particular that has only a few choices, because those are musical choices that have worked on records for years and years and years. If we want to go up a little bit for this sound, we can move it. But there's, it's not every choice in the world, it's ones that have worked over time, and then just kind of gives a musical edge to whatever we're doing. Now, the things we've added on top of it, um, I could show with a different EQ for a moment. Like, let's go. So just looking at uh, another of the EQs that we've added here, if we go ahead and we have one called Focus, which is another Pultec, the MEQ5, that focuses on center frequencies. So it really lets us tune the sound particularly. If I go ahead and boost it, I see what's happening already. And again, I only have so many choices. And then from there, something we added with the original units, you got exactly the saturation that the box provided. Here we give you a choice. So for these color options, the default is impossibly clean from what the original hardware was. I could provide my own plugin for saturation here or my own processor. If I want the original sound, I probably want to go with the tube option. 
which gives a very similar response to the original Pultec box, or even something that wasn't in there at all, a transistor option where you've got more odd harmonics and a mid-range. Do you think that many people will now say goodbye to their existing EQ plugins, especially Bitwig, yeah, Bitwig users? They say goodbye to their EQ plugins and use more these ones? Well, it because might people be, I love mean, to people love to uh, collect plugins and oh, sure. EQs and well look here's my thought we're not trying to replace all the other plugins it, they're all going to have their own unique sound and if you love it you stick with it if you want something integrated that ideally does give you some new options that weren't there before that's pretty good and then we also have users on Linux where not everything was available as a plugin so so we're just trying to make something new and interesting um, and if I, if we can look very briefly at the third plugin. I'm taking a very roughly recorded piano. So you've got that quietness, which is nice in some sounds. Um, I could even push this a little harder and you start hearing the colors of the EQ that's already in there. Amp the analog sense of it a little bit. Now, this is a simple but mono recording, because it, you know you make something as a demo, you have what you have. The third EQ that we've added is a tilt, which is a very simple idea. It exists in a lot of places, saying, I just really want one knob to be able to brighten the sound, to turn everything above that frequency up, or darken it by turning everything below that frequency up instead. Now that's simple enough, and it has a lot of applications, whether you're a sound designer who likes using our modulators, which have been here since version two, for pushing things back and forth, or whatnot. Um, but one of these other modern niceties, I'll open the help again, it's in the inspector, but we can see it bigger. There's an option to stereoize the signal for any of these component models. It now says there are two copies of it because you might want to set them a little bit differently, but in a very direct, easy way. So here, I'm looking at the left-right spread. And if I say, this is a piano, I want to spread the spectrum so the brightness is on the right a little bit, then I can just go ahead and very quickly add a stereo element to it, or even have this slowly morphing during a track with the modulators and everything else. So those are some of the new uh, DSP functions that we added in here. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting are some editing functions that joined the program. So, oops, there we go. I've got a drum beat playing. We know where the onsets are. We have a pretty good engine for that. I could even uh, limit them a little bit and just ask for a few. So I've, I've kind of trimmed down how many onsets we're seeing, so they have to pass a certain threshold. Now, once I click inside here, because I could make a time selection just like I could make an object selection, once I click my cursor, it's as simple as pressing the left and right arrow keys. And wherever I'm editing, it will now look for relevant points, such as onsets if it's an audio file, and let me carry out my functions and just start doing editing. So once I do that, yes, I could reverse audio, or maybe more interesting, reverse the pattern. <laughs> so there becomes a lot of new ways to kind of work between the mouse and the keyboard okay. and to edit what's going on. And uh, as we, uh, this update is coming uh, it's very soon, or it, it's already in beta? It's in beta, so anybody who is a Bitwig user can download it today and, and use it already, any license holder. Um, but yeah, it'll hopefully finish pretty quickly. And Bitwig um, is now 10 years. Yes. And we're celebrating this also with a big sale, 50% off. That's true. Um, something we have not done and I probably won't happen again is a half off sale for the time being. So for the next few days, uh, anything that we sell you, whether it's a new upgrade plan because you use it already or switching from a lower version to the full version, everything, all licenses are half off.
Okay. And I think um, this Bitwig is now 10 years. What is for you, I think, the few points that makes this evolution the most important points in the evolution of Bitwig? Well, what makes you the most happy sure. as, as a user and as a... Yeah. I think, you know, in... It's so funny, so long ago, version two was when we started this idea of modulators, of having, not deciding how many LFOs or envelopes you need, but letting you decide and letting you say, well, this patch needs 10 and this patch needs zero and letting you freely reshape not just our devices, but your plugins. And I think that's really changed the way a lot of people think about things because we're used to, <clears throat> we just want things to be modular now. You know, whether it's having multiple projects open at once or just being able to define what's going on inside of the software. It's something that we're just used to now. And it, it feels like it's been forever, but it was only since version two, less than 10 years ago. And version three with the grid coming, I think really changed a lot for a lot of people. Um, kind of fulfilled an early promise of Bitwig saying, it has a modular heart, there should be a truly modular environment and now we're at like 220 modules or something and, and three different devices for making it. it it's, I think it's changed things for people including me. Personally, I really like the Spectral devices from a couple of releases ago because um, the way I work, they're great for utility things and they really are um, they really are tools that let you get inside of a sound and mix it more uniquely. In a way, I use them to teach my plugins how music works. My compressor shouldn't know what a fundamental is, but now I put him in a slot and he does. And that's really cool. So, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. And um, where, where do the, the journey goes further? Are you adding more devices or you go more to the basics again, adding no, more uh, other features, core features, or sure. but is it well, always I mean, a mixture? It's always a mixture. Uh, we are a DAW. We try to play well with whatever OS you're on, with whatever plugins you have, whatever MPE and CV equipment. So there will be new things in the world that we do have to support. But on top of that, no, there's basic DAW ideas that we have some ideas about and we want to do a little bit differently. I, I hear from friends of mine, they asking, Ara, is this a topic for you as, as Bitwig? Oh, sure. No, we're, we're aware of it. I mean, there's plenty of plugins that work in different ways, and we want to support things as well as possible. How we prioritize and what we can get to next, that's always a, an interesting question. But no, we're, we're aware of things like that. Sure. And iOS? Is this probably too much work, yeah? It's not, well, there's a question of work, there's a question of what's allowed in their store, and I'm not even sure how that's changed recently, if it's changed at all. Because we do things like real-time compilation to optimize the, pro the performance on your device, that, that was a no-go for a while. I, I don't know the status right and I now. And I think uh, it's a big plus that you're offering it for Linux. Because Linux, it's, it's so raw for the door. Well, and it'll be interesting to see what the next 10 years brings for Linux, not just computers, but devices in the world, and how that changes. Between Linux and Clap plugins and all these other things, there is a certain um, momentum to those things. So, yeah. And how would you, um, because now there are probably also new users who try, will try Bitwig with this new, with this special offer. How would you uh, go in it? Uh, try everything at, at the once or uh, how would you, uh, what would you recommend to a beginner? I, I would recommend to start by trying to make the music you're interested in. I mean, I would literally find an instrument that sounds good, hit record, because the workflow is different now to, uh, say, Logic Pro, or it's different to Ableton, it's different to Pro Tools. There's some differences, but there's a lot of similarities. I mean, in the end, we are all dealing with timelines. And if you can start by finding what is familiar to you, then you might find the things on top of it. And the good thing about the time we live in, I. I probably have six or seven DAWs on my computer. It's not like, hey, you have to switch. Switch yeah. isn't a word anymore. Try I, out, yeah. Find two things that you like here, and then we're in a pretty good place, you know? I, I, I'm just happy to enhance people's options. So go for something new. And try it, yeah. yeah see if you because like you it. have also the, the free 8-track version that 
that you can try out and then uh, sure. Or the or the full version in trial or demo mode. Like it, things are available today. So yeah, who knows? I mean, if people are making music, we're all we're all winners if there's good tools. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, so the update coming soon, and uh, we're looking forward then for the next 10 years, 20 years. Thank you. This is just the beginning because 10 years, yeah, it's, it's already a run, <laughs> a good run. It's a good run, and we'll keep at it. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Thanks thank you. By. Thank you. And hope you enjoy Super Bowl 24 the next yes. days. And thank you. And hope to see you again in the next videos. Bye.